told you it wasn't going to work. You can't run two Orions off that alternator in that van. He said it wouldn't take long. I can never remember what they're called. No way. She's laughing now. <laughs> Won't be laughing later though, will she? No. We've got a job to do, right? Because we're getting all this um, sunshine and it's like July and it's sunny, isn't it? I'm warm. Mm. Most days. Yeah, as we say in hoodies, we're doing a job. What are we doing? We are fitting a second Orion. There she is, right there. And hopefully, this is going to be all that you're going to need to do the job. We think. It'll be all right. So, basically, what we've got is we've got a Victor on Orion right there. Now, we've gone for the non-isolated DC to DC Victor on Orion. And that... And this whole video is sponsored by... 12 Volt Planet. Yep, the guys at 12 Volt Planet reached out to us and we were said, when we decided what we were doing, um, they've supplied us with the Victron Orion and a couple of the other bits as well. So, massive thanks to them. Links are going to be in the description. If you do want to get a left or sort of stuff, where'd you go, Em? 12 Volt Planet. Yeah, 100%. And also, on the website as well, there's an ideal thing up there called a cable sizer. So, if you don't know what size fuses you want to use and things like that for the length and stuff it works it all out for you also Brilliant. they are really knowledgeable as well and helpful mm, and they have a blog regularly that tells you loads of different information on you know all sorts of electrical stuff for your van really good definitely go over there check them out so we've got the victor and orion we've got some cable crimping crimpers can never remember what they're called but you know what they do? They're for these boys, for when you're crimping the cables. Um, I never remember what they are. We've got a connection for when we're splitting off. A couple of different tools. We've got a, a switch, which I will tell you all about the switch and why we've got the switch when we're doing the job. So for the feed from the actual battery itself, we're going with 35 mil cable. And that is going to go to a 100 amp mega fuse. Right, and then from the mega fuse, that's where it gets a bit tricky because we've got two Orions. Once you've got the 35mm cable in, we're then going to split off it with two 16mm cables to go to each of the Victron Orions. And we're going to be using 50 amp MIDI fuses. That's going to basically protect each one of the two Orions in the back of the van. So we need to get this cable in first, then we can split off it going to them two fuses. So your main battery for your actual crafter and the sprinter is under here. You've got to take these three off, take this panel off, remove that, and then that will all come out. So there's your battery right there. This is your live wire for the van. There is your negative ground or earth, depending on what you want to call it. So that's undone now. So we can disconnect this. So that actually gives you this full connection block here. Right, if we open that up, you can see that we could fit a 100 amp mega fuse in there. We haven't. We've gone in the back and we've just taken the feed right the way through with this cable and gone to the back. That's fine. There's no problem as long as this cable is fused at the back of the van okay this is the feed that goes back to our normal ryan because we've only got one it only we got away with a 16 mil cable but we can cut this off now and then this cable is going to come out and be replaced for the 32 mil one so this is traced in trunken underneath the van it's all fine it's all tidy a lot of people say oh, it's under your van what happens if you hit a stone but so are all your brake lines and so are all your engine and your gearbox so don't really be worried about that you don't need to trace the cables inside the van underneath is fine as long as it's all tucked up tucked out the way cable tied up safe and fine you're good to go so we've undone the cable from there and emma is just literally underneath the van there and she's undoing the old cable which we did have cable tied in place we actually did have the old cable in some hose line as well which was the perfect thing to just keep it a little more secure but there's not a mark on that it was all out the way all perfect so before we put the cable in we're going to put one of the ends on the actual cable dead easy we've just bared the cable back with the knife just cut a bit of the actual rubber off make sure they're all straight and then 
making sure that none of the actual cables come out slide that over there so once you get that on there just like that give it a good push up and then you can crimp it with your actual crimping tool onto the cable We've got the cable all crimped up, as you can see there, and we've got a yellow shrink wrap. And I know people's OCD will be going overboard, but that's what we've got. And so there's that's a what reason we're using. We want to know exactly which cable in the actual battery feed is going to be for the um, Orions. So that's why we're using yellow. We've also run out of red. That's another reason. <laughs> As luck has it, the cable fits inside the tube. That's good, because we can then put this in there, put it back underneath, just a bit of double protection. It's a tight fit, but we'll get there. Okay, so we've got the actual cable right the way through the actual box there, and then we've mounted it back into the connection point for all the lives, gone onto the top, as you can see, that's there. Um, yeah, we could have got a hundred amp fuse and just fused it off that one to there to break the bar but i want it fused in a position in the van where it's easy accessible i can get to it and it's no problem so we've just got to put the casing back on there and then that is ready to connect back up to the battery once we've got everton connected at the other end our cable did come in you can see the cable there it came in there just next to the sink and we've had it along this conduit path just there into the booth. So we've just got to get the bigger cable up through here now, pull it down the back, and then follow the rest of these cables all the way into the booth. We have got the cable right the way through, and it comes into the back of the van. Right, I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to try and show you exactly where we've put it and exactly how we've mounted it. So we've got the fuse there. We've got one Orion there, and then one Orion is going to go there. The cable is all down there, nicely tucked out the way. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually make the link cables because we're going to be going off the 100 amp there into these two. Um, we're going to be using link cables like this. So we're going to have one cable going from one, one going cable going from the other, and then both of the cables going back to the 100 amp. That is going to be the link that is going to connect the mains. Does he rhymes? Mm. So we did have a linker, but it's kind of easy just going off the mega fuse. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but that's going to go in now. It's a bit of a small space in there, isn't it? It's a bit of a tight squeeze. Mm. Tight squeeze for the big chap. <laughs> right, going to get that in, fasten that up, and then I'll be able to show you what we've done. It's a wee bit dark without the lights. Yeah, I mean, only if, you know, we'd been sent a thousand head torches and lights, you know, that wouldn't that be wonderful? You've got one Orion there, and we've got one Orion there. We've got the fuse for the top one there, and we've got the fuse for the second one, which is right there, which is the red one. The main fuse coming in is the big yellow one. I need to put the covers on them, which I will do right now. So they're all nice. All the cables are all tidy. I've cabled and screwed them all in around the sides as well. So all we need to do now is put the battery back on. We've connected all the cables back up to the lithium and that was all in and that's fine. Right, what's next? Food. No, we've got to put the battery in the van. That's what's next. He said it wouldn't take long. We've been here seven years. So we've got the battery back in place, the cable, the main cable runs round the side of the battery and then it goes into this box here. Just need to tighten these up and make sure they're all nice and tight. So the live is on and the earth is nice and tight now. So that can go in. I don't know why I put pieces of cardboard over the terminals like this. It's just force of habit. What I also do, always keep a spanner on top of the actual battery just in case I need to connect, disconnect them at any time. Right, this can all go back to how it was, just like that. Now it's time to go on the phone, open the app, and probably update it. So I've gone in and I've put all the settings in. I will show you the settings we've got on screen. If we go into settings, function charger. That is always set for some reason to power. Make sure you put to charger first because you don't want it as power. And as far as I know, power doesn't work. Could be right, could be wrong, not sure. Put it on charger. Battery settings. We've got lithium. 
User defiance, it is defiance of lithium. Um, absorption charge, 14.4. Flows, 13.6. And then you can see all the settings that I've got put in there. If we go back and go to engine shutdown detected, user defined again, and you can see the actual voltage you've got, you know, start voltage 13.7. So it just means that until your alternator is putting out 13.7 volts, it won't start charging the lithium. Now we can put the little green clip in, which I'll show you now. So this boy, now this is the bridge. And what this does is it basically tells the unit that everything is okay and it can start charging the lithium battery. When you take this out, it doesn't charge. It does nothing. Basically, it does nothing. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take this cable out, and we're going to wire this up to a small switch, enabling us to basically turn the unit on or off when we want. We don't need two Orions running in summer, because we've got solar coming in, one's enough. But for winter, well, different story, isn't it? If we can have 60 amps going into the main battery in the living part, the leisure battery of a winter, it just means that if you are using lots of power, you can also generate lots of power to put back into your system. So we're going to put this on a switch, and literally we're just going to put the switch in the same cupboard that we pushed the wires through. So it'll be inside a cupboard on and off switch. I was going to put it on the dashboard, but there's no need. Or, I could even fit it on the rear of the doors, just where the actual switch for the compressor is. I'll show you. So we do have a switch there for the compressor. There's nothing to stop me putting another switch there for the second B to B and being able to switch it on and switch it off. That way, if it's on the back doors, it can't get pressed by mistake. Let's start the engine because that's where the problems could start. So one of the problems that we may face is, and some of you might have gone to this already, the alternator in the crafter only puts out 120 amps. Now, you need round about 50 amps to run the basic van. Then we're pulling off another 30 for one Victor and Orion, there's 80 amps. You're pulling off another one, there's 110 amps. Now, we can put a 180 amp alternator on it, but we're gonna do that as a secondary measure. We're, we're not going to do it now. We're basically going to see if this works and will we get away with it? Fingers crossed. We probably won't. I will be upgrading the alternator anyway just because the alternator that's been on this van has probably been on it since 2014 and it could do as an upgrade. So upgrading it to a 180 amp alternator is only going to do the van justice and it's going to help. That's off. I didn't put the little bridge connector in properly and it no, was did not. it said remote input inactive so both of them are working fine putting 60 amps into the lithium hey. this is your space. i fitted a little switch there which says orion number two so that can be turned on in the winter and off in the summer the cable runs all the way back through the trunk and and goes into the second Orion and it goes into the little link that's in the bottom which enables it to work or not to work right I'm going to attempt to draw this with a pen on a piece of um, white plastic to show you exactly what I've done right so we have our van which is there the van has an alternator which is there then it has a battery which powers the van. In the back of the van we have a leisure battery which powers the living quarters of the van. We have got one Victron Orion there and one Victron Orion there. We've got a splitter there and then we pull the 35mm cable from there to the splitter which is a 100 amp mega fuse. We've come off the 100 amp mega fuse with two feeds going to two 50 amp, two 50 amp fuses, which then go in to each Orion. Each Orion is also independently connected to the earth of the van. From each Orion, go in to the battery putting in 
30 amps each times that by two gives you 60 amps that was really rough but you get what i'm saying um not really complicated at all we've gone for the non-isolated orions which means that you don't have to bring a positive and a negative from your battery you just need one cable to feed the orion again the guys at 12 volt planet supplied us with the orion we do buy all of our electric stuff off 12 volt planet because they're just reliable they're in the uk they're fast and they're cheap as well so bit of a bonus so Links are going to be in the description to everything that we've got and everything that you need to do this job if you want a double one and everything that you need if you need a single one. I'll list it all out in the actual description below. It will be in the description below. Everything that you need to do this job. All the links will be there to 12 or Planet, whatever you need, the right stuff. Um, you might just need to get yourself a couple of cable connections and whatever size connections your batteries are and things like that then just use common sense on that one oh it's not really hard and over winter it gives us double the power as well we've just got to hope that the alternator in the van will allow it oh we're going to upgrade that anyway like i've said previously can you survive without a double orion yes you can the reason we done it is because we can um, I'm not trying to be a smart ass, not trying to be one better than anybody else, but we just thought we have the means to do it. We may as well do it to show other people what to do, and in a bonus, we get more power. So there you go. Right, I'm going. I'll price up alternators now. <laughs> 